the 50 millimeter. Is normal boring? My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. I wanted to be a landscape photographer. But with a family to feed and bills to pay, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. It was time to follow my passion. Come along on my journey to become the best photographer I can be. Whether it be film or digital, I will be sharing what I learned through my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is Bright in the Edge. When I started photography, the 50 millimeter lens came with on just about all new cameras. It was, I guess what you could call the kit lens of the day. So for those that don't know, a 50 millimeter in, in 35 millimeter frame is considered by some people the, the normal focal length, what you see, what best represents what you see with your eye. It, it might be a little less than that. Maybe it's a 40 millimeter, but these are always been called the normal focal length. Recently I was watching a, a YouTube video and a pretty well-known landscape photographer was asked if he used a 50 millimeter lens. And his response was, a 50 millimeter lens is normal and normal is boring. <laughs> I laughed, I laughed out loud when I heard that. And the reason I laughed was that was me probably most of my life, at least at the beginning of my photography career. Uh, I probably heard it from someone else. When I started working as a professional many years ago, as a news photographer, I just carried wide angle lenses or wide angle zooms and uh, short telephoto, usually carried two bodies. Uh, the uh, uh, 70 to 200 would be my telephoto. And I really just never concerned myself with the middle, with, uh, with the 50 millimeter. Um, I just left, I, I, I've had this lens for many years and it, it just sat on the shelf. Fast forward 25 years and I find myself feeling naked if I don't have a 50 millimeter in my bag. There are times when I'm going out and I want to save weight and space. And I think, well, I'll just take, I'll just take my 20 and my 85. But there's always that voice nagging in the back of my head. Take the 52. I mean, it weighs nothing. It's very compact. I mean, it's, it'd be silly not just take it. And there's so many times where I'm really glad I did. It was just the right focal length for the shot I was, I was making. So why have I changed my mind? Why is it that I value the 50 millimeter so much now? Well, let's, let's start with the size. Now, this is a 1.8 aperture, um, which make, keeps it pretty small, but still fairly, fairly fast lens. But the size of this thing is incredible. <laughs> I mean, I, it, is, it is very light. It is, it is um, very compact. I mean, there's really, it, it's, it's like when I'm carrying it, it's not like I'm really carrying anything anyway. I, I might as well have it. I don't use wide angle zooms right now. I just have my 20 millimeter. I've kind of settled in on a wide angle that I like the most. And so this fills the gap between the 20 and the 70 to 200 or the 85, just depending on what I'm using that day. Now, if you go up in, in faster apertures, like a 1.4 or 1.2 or something like that, then in, you're gonna be increasing the size and weight. And I, for me, I would prefer to have a little bit slower lens and stick with this size. Now, image quality with the 50 millimeter is another um, attribute that I, I really enjoy. It's really a um, very sharp lens. I've been so impressed with the uh, image quality that I get out of this, this really affordable lens. I'll even use this thing at f16. I know. <laughs> what about diffraction? I've, I've tested this lens at f16 and 
it really, there's very little difference. It, um, it looks great, so why not, you know, get that extra depth of field. 22 might be, F22 might be pushing a little bit, but F16 works, works great, on, at least on my copy. Price is another thing that is very attractive to this 50 millimeter. I mean, they're very affordable. Um, you could probably go on just about any site online and pick these things up for, for under hundred bucks. I mean, extremely, extremely affordable, at least for the 1.8 aperture. When you start going to the faster lenses, they do, um, the price does go up quite a bit. But for my needs for landscape photography, I really don't need those fast apertures. The, the one point is, is plenty fast, works, works plenty well. You're not gonna find a better bang for the buck than the 50 millimeter lens. It's just sharp, affordable, and extremely compact. Sometimes I feel a super wide angle lens pushes that background just too far away and it distorts the image so much that, that I feel like all you're really seeing is the effects of the lens and, and uh, I don't think sometimes it's doing justice to the subject. In this mountain scene, I really think the 50 millimeter is, is, was the perfect choice for this, this shot. I, I, I also shot this photograph, more telephoto, but I really like that I'm still getting the presence of the mountain, but with some interest in the, in the foreground. It's, just, it's more of a balanced image, I think. It's less of a portrait of a mountain and, and, and more of a it's more about the overall scene. I think the 50 millimeter does a, an excellent job on the intimate landscape. Those middle distance landscapes, like a trail heading through the woods, or a, a path or a, a old road going through a field. I also find myself using this lens for for detail shots, for, for close ups, maybe not macro, but but just uh, the detailed shot showing some of the elements in the, in the nature, in the landscape. But for just detail and texture shots, the 50 works great for that. And for those shots where you want to isolate the subject, but still have the presence of, of the environment that it's in, you can get that um, nice separation. You still get a little bit of blur in the background, but it's still wide enough that the, uh, the um, environment is, is um, giving context to the photograph. I think for portrait photography, the, the 50 millimeter is um, a very good choice for full length, um, three quarter length shots for people in, in couples. I, I like using it for engagement photos. So when I'm, when I'm doing portrait photography, it's probably my most used um, lens. I, I don't do a lot of tight, tight stuff with the 50. I, I, I prefer a little bit longer focal length. I still feel like if you get a little close, it's still a little bit, it distorts the features a little bit. The 50 millimeter lens may not be the best choice for every shot, but there are times where it's just the right lens for the subject or the scene. That's what keeps it in my camera bag. I don't see that changing anytime soon. Well, I hope this, this little video on the 50 millimeter lens has, has maybe got you thinking a little bit, or you, you may have one and, and may use it all the time and, and it might be your favorite lens. I wouldn't call it my favorite lens, but I appreciate what I get with it. And I definitely wouldn't call it boring. If the photographs you're getting with the 50 millimeter are boring, Maybe it's the subject or the composition. I don't really think you should call any focal length or any lens boring. There's a purpose for, for everything. So give the 50 a try if you don't have one. You might find that it's worth having in your bag. Well, I'm just gonna end today's video right here. Until the next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.